Hey, what's going on? So today I want to do a really quick video on how to make your screens automatically switch while you're doing an OBS recording. This is especially useful for like FL Studio when I want to have my project over here that I'm working on, but I also want to have my mixer on the other screen. But essentially all we're doing is adding in a tool to OBS Studio that allows the cursor to be tracked. And you basically map out where your screens are and once your mouse hits a certain point on the screen, it converts it to this new scene, which is basically a display capture of your other screen. So I did see some videos on YouTube talking about this, but I didn't see anything that was dated to May 2023, which is whenever this new version came out and it looked really confusing whenever I was trying to figure it out. There's quite a few other channels that show how to install OBS Studio and the Advanced Scene Switcher, so I won't spend much time talking about it in this video, but I will say that all you need to do is Google OBS Studio, install that from their website, and it's very straightforward. To get the Advanced Scene Switcher installed, it's easiest just to go ahead and Google OBS Studio Advanced Scene Switcher. It's going to be a link on their website. Their website's going to take you to another website. You scroll down to the bottom and then find which download you need for your computer. The Advanced Scene Switcher is a little bit more difficult to install. If you undo the zip folder and drag those folders into the corresponding folders of your OBS Studio download, then that should work. And if you've installed it correctly, it should be showing up under Tools in your OBS menu. So now that we have OBS installed and the Advanced Scene Switcher installed, this is the part that I really want to talk about because I had a lot of confusion here. So what we're going to want to do is go ahead and open up OBS. I already have some scenes in here, but yours will be blank. I had to have those in in order to record this. Um, but basically all you're going to do is add in a plus name it whatever you want to name it. Um, so for me, I have screen one, screen two, and then screen three up top. So under each of these sources are going to be correlated to a display. So really all that means is that I have the first scene in here. This is my main screen and I've created a display capture right here. I basically created a new display. And from here, you pick which one of your monitors you want to represent scene one. So for me, that's my main screen, which is this one here. Click OK, and that will create my scene one. So since I already have that done, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And you're going to repeat the same thing for display two. So if I click on this, it's going to represent that second monitor on my right here. So I went ahead and named that scene two right. Scene three, same thing. Um, I've got the top monitor there corresponding to scene three. So now that we have all of our scenes set up, what we can do is head over to the tools tab here and go to advanced scene switcher. So if you installed it correctly, advanced scene switcher will be in your toolbox here. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And what it's going to give us here is two tabs. One of them is going to be general and the other is going to be macro. So the important thing that we're going to do in the general tab is scroll down to where it says priority. So what we're going to be doing is prioritizing number one. We're going to scroll down and find where it says screen region. And once you locate screen region, you're going to go ahead and click this up arrow and move it all the way to the top. That's going to be our number one priority is basing our screen switches on our mouse cursor moving to that new screen. So that's all that we want to do for the general tab. Now what we're going to do is set up the macros. Now the macros are basically going to tell us, hey, it's time to switch to this next screen. All that we're going to worry about is cursor, mapping, and when to switch. So as you can see, I have macros one, two, and three. I've already created these. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do a fresh one. <clears throat> this is going to be macro four as we'll call it. Now this gets a little confusing. So what we're basically doing in this top section, we're going to pick what we want to trigger the change. And then at the bottom is going to be what's going to be the change. We'll pull one in of each. So the command that we're going to create is if cursor, because again, we're talking about our cursor is in the region blank through blank. We're going to be in screen one or what we have defined as scene one. So if I click show frame on the one that I've already made, you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So what we're saying is if cursor is in these coordinates, we are gonna switch scenes to scene one, which is also screen one. So it all ties in together and you know you did it right if you have, um, if you have a striped screen once you hit show frame. 
But if you don't, then you probably have some work to do and you need to re remap some stuff. Something really useful is that it tells you where your cursor is currently at while you're doing this. So basically I wanna highlight where my bottom left corner of my screen is and then the other coordinates is gonna be my top right because that is the area that we're mapping. So in this instance, it's gonna be 0, 1079. So Y is gonna be our 1079. Scroll up to the top right and I can almost get it in the corner. Um, but you can see that our X is now gonna be 1919 because if you have a 1920, 1080 resolution screen, then as soon as it goes past that pixel to the next screen, you want it to swap, swap frames. So for the new frame, we're gonna go ahead and type in the 1919 and the 1079, 1919, and then 1079. And then we'll click show frame to verify that we have this correct. Now the second half to this is what we want to happen once our cursor is in that mapped area. So what we want to happen is switch scene. So for me, this is my main screen. I want it to be switched to scene one or screen one, uh, which I have identified over here in OBS as my main screen. And you can see that that's correlated over here in these scenes. So switching to scene one using current transition, uh, because you can edit that on this page here, scene transition. So current transition with a duration of blank seconds. And you can set that here in this main screen. So all you need to worry about is setting it to the correct screen and the correct coordinates and just put it on current transition unless you always want it to cut, then you can just click cut. Then you'll basically repeat that with all of your macros that you have for each screen. So the coordinates for my screens is gonna be right here. And then once you have that all set up, you can go in here and play with the scene transitions. The main thing to summarize is basically you want three scenes in OBS. You want each of those screens to be associated with your desktop screens. And then you're basically using advanced scene switcher to tell the scenes which screen they want to switch to based on the coordinates of your cursor, which you have mapped out in these macros. So anyways, I hope that helps somebody out there. I hope to save you a little bit of time. If it did, then be sure to like and subscribe so that it can help the algorithm push up my channel. And if you guys have any questions, just let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to help out as much as I can. I'm no OBS expert by any means. Uh, this is just a little detail that I happened to figure out. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next time.